the rosy hue of dawn, cast a glow over the soaring ramparts and wide plains of Troy. The city walls and landscape alike bore the scars of the ten-year war that had ravaged the land, ever since the Greeks had beached their ships at the Trojan shore and set upon this great capital of the east with a never-ending siege. Countless Greeks and Trojans had met their end beneath Troy's towers, felled by spears, cut down by swords, and pierced with the arrows of foes evenly matched in grit and valor. And the past year of the war had seen the last battles of champions on both sides. The Greek Patroclus, dearest of all to the supreme warrior Achilles, had died to the Trojan hero Hector, who in turn was slain in revenge by Achilles himself. The scourge of a decade-long war had worn down the will of the Trojans to keep fighting, though they swore to keep on until the end. And against their impenetrable walls, the deadliest champions of Greece were assembling once more, the indomitable Ajax and Diomedes, the cunning Odysseus, the imperious, covetous Agamemnon, and most feared of all, clad in divine armor forged by Hephaestus himself, the godlike Achilles. But here, now, in the last months of the Trojan War, as the crimson dawn cast across the battlefield, a new wind was blowing in support of Troy. The Amazons were a famed but secluded nation of warrior maidens who lived far away on the banks of the river Thermodon in their capital city of Themyscira. Tales told that they were the daughters of Ares, god of war, and they matched in their might and skill in battle the most glorious men of old. In ages past they had waged wars of their own upon the land of Troy, and the tomb of an Amazonian hero, the swift-footed Myrine, still stood upon its plains. But now, as fate would have it, they found themselves an unlikely ally of the beleaguered Trojans. And so the battlefield at Troy invited a new set of champions into the fray. The Amazon queen and her band of loyal guardians had arrived. Penthesilea, the young queen of the Amazons, had two reasons for coming to fight. One was her ambition to win renown, the undying glory that every hero strove for. But the other was a wound deep in her heart, a sorrow that never slept. How she had slain her own sister in a dreadful accident. Absorbed in the hunt, she and Hippolyta had pursued a stag into the deep green woods when a fateful spear cast by Penthesilea had veered off course and struck her dear sister dead. Carrying that grief in her heart, ever since then Penthesilea cared no longer for her own life and desired only to meet a glorious end in the heat of battle. After the tragic death of Hippolyta, it had been the kindly King Priam of Troy who took in Penthesilea and ritually cleansed her of the blood pollution incurred by her crime. And so now, in the hour of Troy's need, as Priam's kingdom was teetering on the brink, she had found a path to the glory and the glorious death that she sought, to fight and die in defense of the war-torn city. And so the Queen Penthesilea and her elite guard of twelve Amazons had set forth from their home by the streams of Thermodon and rode their thundering steeds across Anatolia to Troy. Penthesilea was the tallest and most beautiful of the Amazons and shone among her twelve maidens like the moon among the stars or the radiant goddess of the dawn among the hours who trail her chariot. When they had arrived at Troy, the vast gates were unbarred to allow them entry, 
and the riders wound their way through the citadel of Troy to the palace. The long despairing Trojans rejoiced when they beheld the warrior queen, both terrible and beautiful, for whom the sight of her was like Iris, the rainbow goddess, after the end of a driving storm. And when the Amazons were greeted by the Trojan lord himself, old King Priam, he looked upon them with the joy of a man long blind, beholding the light of the sun once more. Priam held a great feast, and lavished Penthesilea with many beautiful gifts, cups of gold and embroideries, and a sword with a hilt of silver. And she vowed to the old king before all that she would slay the Greek Achilles. Now the next morning had come, and Penthesilea had risen from sleep, just as rosy dawn was waking up the heavens and the earth. Today was the day of battle, the day the Amazon queen would ride against the Greeks to win honor and fame and meet a glorious end. She fastened her exquisite armor and bore up her javelins and the sword that hung at her side, the great crescent-shaped shield of Amazonian craft, and her famous battle-axe, twin-bladed, the divine gift of Eris, goddess of strife. She mounted her horse, a brilliant steed from the stables of the wind-god Boreas and his once mortal bride. Driving forth from the gates of Troy like Zeus's lightning, she hurtled across the plains toward the Greek lines, and the twelve fearsome maidens of her elite guard galloped alongside, the whole Trojan army following in their wake. The Greek camps by the shore protected their fleet of ships, vital for their ability to travel and provision themselves to press the siege. It was at these ships, which even the great Hector couldn't burn though he tried, that Penthesilea aimed her assault. Her charge kicked up dust on the plain, signaling the Greek soldiers milling around the camp that an unexpected attack was coming at them, and panic rippled through their ranks. The commanders restored order among them, and the Greeks assembled for the fight, donning their armor and helmets and gripping their spears and swords. As the vanguard of thirteen warriors on horseback came into view, each bearing a gleaming crescent shield, ominous whispers raced through the battle lines. Who is this who leads the Trojans like Hector led them? It must be gods who ride from Troy. The two armies clashed in a swirl of roars, cries, crashing chariots, battered shields, and clanging bronze. In moments, the ground of Troy again ran red with blood, as the unstoppable Penthesilea slew Molios, and Persinoos, and Elysos, and Antiphates, and Lernos, high of heart, and Hippalmos of the loud war cry, and Hymonides, and strong Elisippus, while beside her the noble maidens Derinoe and Clonie slew two commanders of the Greeks. But the fire of war claimed half, of Penthesilea's loyal Amazonian comrades. Unlucky Clonia was the first, who fell to the lethal spear of the Greek Podarches, while Idomeneus, the lord of Crete, speared Bremusa, and his lieutenant Meriones slew Evadre. Their Modosa and Derinoe were cast down in the dust, and bold Diomedes, among the most feared of the Greek heroes, cut down Alcibiae and Derimachaea, both in close combat with the sword. The Trojans and Greeks spilled blood all across the field, and Penthesilea avenged her fallen guardians, driving the ranks of the Greeks as a lioness drives cattle on the hills, unable to withstand her fury. Then she shouted out for them all to hear, her blood running hot, You dogs! Today you pay dearly for the sorrow of King Priam. Where is Diomedes? Where is Ajax? Where is Achilles, your bravest man? 
will none of them stand before me? And she lashed out again, leading the Trojan brothers and kinsmen of Priam and Hector, who brandished torches to set fire to the enemy camp and ships. And wherever they came, the Greeks fell down like dead leaves before an autumn wind. The shining white steed that Penthesilea rode flashed like lightning through a dark cloud among the hosts of the Greeks, and the chariots that followed the Amazonian charge rocked and rattled as they swept over the bodies of the slain. Away from the battleground, the ringing clash of arms had not yet reached a quiet patch of earth further up the shore. Here, as yet unaware of the Amazons' attack, two great heroes of the Greeks, the mighty Ajax and godlike Achilles, had come to kneel at the recent grave of Patroclus, their comrade in arms. Achilles' grief for Patroclus, the closest of all his friends from a young age, had run deep and dark, and still haunted him even now. Tears welled in his eyes at the graveside. But as Penthesilea hammered against the Greek lines and they began to crack, leaving the path open to set fire to the ships, Ajax heard the far-off noise of war on the air, summoning him to battle to save the fleet. He took up his arms and called out to Achilles and ran headlong toward the fray. Achilles heard Ajax's words, slowly dried his fresh tears, and stood up from the grave, pulling his resplendent helm over his head and gripping his ashen spear, bidding a regretful farewell to his dear comrade Patroclus, the deadliest of the Greeks, made his way toward the field. The two Greek champions leapt into battle with the power of gods, smiting and slaying the Trojans in a whirlwind. No resistance held Achilles back as he entered combat with the rest of Penthesilea's noble guard who sought him out in the field, and in a spectacle of speed and control, frenzy and strategy, he slew all five of the Amazon elite who fell to his spear. This terrifying display didn't escape Penthesilea's eyes as she scanned the battleground, now a wasteland of fire and blood. Beholding her last five companions cut down, with a mighty cry she reared her steed and rode straight against Achilles and Ajax like a dove defying two falcons, and hurled one of her javelins, but it fell back blunted from the divine shield the smithing god had made for Achilles. Then she threw her second at Ajax, but he barely evaded the razor-sharp head. Trusting fully in the prowess of his brother-in-arms, Ajax broke off his attack on the Amazon queen, leaving all to Achilles, and he rushed back to protect the ships from the Trojans' onslaught. The queen leveled her eyes at Achilles, the most glorious prize of all and he in turn locked his gaze upon her, and he shouted out boastfully over the field, Woman, how do you dare come here to do battle with men like us who rival the heroes of old? Even Hector quaked for all his might before my spear put him down. Have you not heard of the heaps I've slain in the red waters of the river Xanthus? Penthesilea heard his taunts and tightened her grip on the hilt of her axe. Throwing back her head, her helmet crest shaking, she laughed and bellowed in return, You'll die with your boasts. By this hand of mine I'll lift your curse that afflicts Priam in this land of Troy. Come on and try me and see for yourself what burns in the heart of an Amazon. War runs in my veins like blood, and Ares is my father. In a flash, both of them moved in for the fatal strike. Swift-footed Achilles dashed forward, bearing with ease the weight of his clanging armor, and readying his spear with unequaled precision. 
Penthesilea spurred forward her snorting warhorse, closing the gap toward Achilles, swinging her twin-bladed axe with an almighty cry. In the blink of an eye, the champions met, and in another, with a crimson spray, a fatal blow found its mark. All at once, Penthesilea felt her strength drain away, darkness come over her eyes, and the great battle-axe slipped from her fingers. Along with the queen, her noble steed beneath her quivered and slumped forward, both of them felled by the same terrible wound. Achilles's great spear, the gift of the centaur Chiron, had pierced horse and rider alike with a single stroke. As the blood dripped from beneath her shattered breastplate, Penthesilea gritted her teeth and fired her resolve against all odds. She grasped the hilt of her sword, willing herself to draw it and fight on. But in vain. Her divine steed teetered and tumbled to the earth, and the Amazon maiden rolled from her mount. Beneath the red dawn still creeping across the sky, the light dimmed in her eyes as her last thoughts passed to the kingdom she tried to save, the sister she had tragically lost, and the warrior's death she had yearned for and now finally attained. All around, as news of her demise, along with her twelve guardians, spread around the field, the Trojans turned in retreat, failing again to reach the Greek ships. And there lay Penthesilea, in the dust of Troy, fearsome and beautiful, even in death. Achilles stood over her, unscathed and invincible as ever, the victor yet again, and the dealer of death to another brave hero. He knelt and removed the shining helmet from the queen's head and gazed on the fair face of his dread enemy. Like Artemis she was, when she sleeps alone, weary with hunting on the high hills, youthful, untamed, and unstoppable as the goddess of the wild woods. And as he knelt there, the heart of Achilles was pierced with pity and sorrow, visions crossing his mind that, in another world, in better times, such a woman might have been his wife in his own country, his equal in love and valor. But he was never to see Thea, his native land, again. Like Patroclus before her, the glorious Amazon was robbed of her life on the plains of Troy, and one day he too would join them. Thus did Achilles weep for Penthesilea. They say that the Greeks, when they came upon the scene of the warrior queen's death, stood in awe themselves, rooted to the spot. And when one of the Greeks, a brash soldier named Thersites, unwisely mocked Achilles for the respect he showed to a dead enemy, Achilles' rage swelled and he sliced Thersites down in one move. The rest of the Greeks, following their champion's example, held back and refused to strip the queen's corpse of her fine armor to take as their trophy, the convention of victory. Instead, they gathered the bodies of all thirteen of the fallen Amazons and sent them back with dignity to the city of Troy, where they were received by Priam with deep despair. The Trojans cremated them in noble custom. Penthesilea, surrounded by her maidens in death as in life, and they laid their ashes to rest in honor in a casket of gold under the red sky of a new dawn over the land. The Trojan War would go on, 
and claim yet more lives of godlike heroes. But here ended the tale of Penthesilea, the Amazon queen, who had earned a warrior's rest. Thank you.